Dealing with the daily ups and downs, thumps and bumps of school life is something most children take for granted. But imagine coping with classes, corridors and playtime if your world is just a hazy blur. In this programme, we spend a day with Anna, a visually impaired pupil at Wadhurst Primary School in East Sussex. Your ideas. Through trial and error, the staff has worked towards integrating her into the school. I'll put a snack there like that to remind us. OK, let's have one more. Have you... I think the lessons from Wadhurst is that they're currently displaying good practice in inclusion, but we'd like that to become standard practice, essentially. And the fact that they're not setting themselves up as experts, they've experienced problems, but they keep at it. So what problems have they had to overcome? How hard has it been for the school to ensure she can access the curriculum? And how difficult has it been for her to make friends? Is Anna's world a happy one? I like lessons. I like lunch time. Is there anything you don't like? like? Well, I don't like them. Um, I don't like sometimes at playtime. I don't like people saying, well, they won't let me do a show series or they won't let me play. That's not very often though, is it? Well, mm, no. And it does like to be the boss. It does like to dictate to everybody else what they must do and what, you know, what they can do. So sometimes when they say no, which is quite good for her, really. <laughs> no, it's bad for my feelings. Bad for your feelings, but good for you. Otherwise you'd be spoiled. Anna's day starts the same as her classmates. First lesson is maths. She does exactly the same work as the rest of the class, but has to work closely with her specially trained teaching assistant. Please again, see if there's one here. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Sit down then. Ready? Right. We're in room number five. Tell me what you like about maths. I like easy sums like Two add one equals three. I like my times tables. I learn them, but I don't learn most of the things in maths. Okay, so can you fill up the side for me? Anna has two braille reading teaching assistants, one of whom is with her all the time. We um, try to include her as much as possible in the classroom. Basically, what our aim is to make sure that she's not excluded in any way. It's to support her in her learning generally, in every aspect of learning. Playtimes, everything. Oh, good girl. So we've got room number... Well, sometimes it's a case of wandering off and leaving her. Because otherwise she'd be quite happy just to stand and let you do it all for her. Because it's easier. Right to pretend. I've had to, I've had to stop and think about stuff that you you just do every day without giving it a second glance giving her things and expecting her to take them without actually touching her finger or something with the pen and uh, that's the hardest thing pointing and just assuming yeah. also i think it's to do with giving her independence and allowing her the space to to develop the way that she can do things with me i found that that i was trying at first to do it for her Mm. Whereas you have to actually sit back and allow the child to try and then to guide them. We did have a chat about that, didn't yeah. we? With uh, When she get, comes off the carpet, when Kate set a task, and Anna would just come over and then just stand, and you'd have to say, Wait, like, get your brailler, get yeah. your jelly mat, get your paper, right, we're doing science, we need blue paper for science, get something. Have you put your, put your paper? And it was just one list of instructions. So Maggie and I had a chat, and we said, no, what we do is we'd, we'd turn them all into questions. Yeah. And what do we need now? Right, if we're going to do writing, what do we need now? It's making her think for herself. How much harder do you think it is for her possibly to make friends sometimes, or new friends, because she's got you guys around as her support? Oh, well, that's part of the stepping back. I mean, when the, 
Louise and Catherine, who are Anna's main support, aren't they? They're yes. her best friend. Catherine's her best, best friend. And Catherine's really cool because she makes it look like that's what everybody does when you're best friends. Well, I like Louise and Catherine and also Annabelle. I get Catherine to help me make sure I don't bump into things. So Catherine is my helper. The other children in the class benefit from her presence and she benefits from them. Um, and I'm always amazed at how she gets around places. They, they, the other children in the class know her well. They know better than I do how to support her, for example, walking around the school. And it's almost like she bounces off them as she walks down the corridor. They help me, but they mustn't treat me like a baby because I'm not a baby now. I'm an eight-year-old. She, she she's a very direct child. She will tell them if it's, if it's too much help. I say, please don't fuss over me. You're giving me an earache or a headache. It might seem like, you know, you want to wrap them up in cotton wool and put them in a small school where nobody's going to, you know, bump into them, and, or her in particular, but... It isn't the best, you know, the, life is quite difficult and there are a lot of people out there who are not going to treat her with kid gloves and you can't wrap her up in cotton wool all the time. Hi, straight line. Good girl, that was fantastic. A bit of a bowl rather than a pro. Oh, yeah. Sometimes there are issues for visually impaired children in terms of empathy and understanding other children. Good girl! And sometimes things need to be talked through with Anna. She, she might not understand why a child's gone off or something. They're all the nuances of visual expression and that kind of thing, she won't be able to key into like other children do. And so she does need support in understanding other people, in understanding her impact on other people, but also why they're reacting in certain ways as well. It's important to, for other children within the class to recognise um, the situations and to get them on your side and on Anna's side and for them to become friendly, um, for them to understand um, the relationship that should be developing between them. Sometimes at an early stage staff can go into the playground for instance and try and help to initiate games. Um, and then withdraw. It's very important to try and withdraw as soon as possible so that the child can actually be interacting properly with the other children. Well, my class friends sometimes get sad when I cry and sometimes they get angry when I do naughty things. One of her targets, the last term was it? Yes, this, was this, to this look term. like this she's listening. Because to otherwise attend. you get all this to attend to the teacher, to actually make sure that she's facing towards the, the teacher person who's so talking, that yeah. and the person who's yeah. talking knows that she is listening. Who do we know that works with the government? Who might we pretend oh. to write to? Can you sit down? Jean took ages to explain that people can't tell if you're listening to them if you're not looking. And if you're not looking, then people won't talk to you. And part of it is it's a lot of socialisation we're working on. Majorly. She, she forgets a lot of, about um, everyday things that we take for granted. Niceties, isn't it, that you yes, pick up on yeah. visual, spatial awareness, when she's talking to your belly button. It's knowing what's going on around her, um, because she can't actually see what's going on around her, she has no idea what, what the other children are looking like, for example. She, she hasn't developed an awareness of appropriate behaviour, really, like we have. Where does he live? Some work which Anna does within the classroom is very much on her own um, simply because it's uh, much easier for her to be working with a TA. Um, in other cases uh, it's very important for her to be working with other children as members of the group and of course this will help her social interaction with, with them. It's very difficult actually and I've tried to set aside time when I work with Anna and a group but obviously just being one of me, it's, I have to get around to every child in the class, you know, for literacy and numeracy. Anna, what about you? You'll get loads of energy. That's a good one. So it helps you to get some energy, does it? Why do we need energy, Anna? 
to try and work with the group and Anna is very difficult. Um, so in some cases it works, but for some lessons it's just not practical. Um, but I do, you know, you do make a concerted effort, but it's not at all easy. Why might you need energy? Playtime. When you do your work, you, you have to have energy. But if you don't, you won't do any work and you'll be in trouble. Excellent. So good girl. Recently, the most frustrating thing is the noise the brailer makes when she's having to braille. And particularly if Kate has said we've got work in silence. And all you can hear is, is her, and she's very aware of how loud the brainer is. So that should be sorted with the new piece of kit we've got coming. Anna has a lot of equipment to help her access the curriculum, all paid for by the LEA. This is my brailer. You use this carriage return like that. This is the CCTV. It's a new one. You have two buttons to turn it on and off. It makes things bigger when I can't see small things. Let me tell you about my computer. These are the keys and this is the keyboard. These are the speakers and there's my new printer. But there can be a downside to so much extra equipment in the classroom. To be honest, my classroom isn't that big anyway. And with 29 children and another adult, um, it's very limited in space, so to use up that whole corner, and I'm always saying to everybody, no more room, you know, you can't have any more room. Can you see Mr Skeleton over here? Can you see him? Yeah. There's his pelvis. You need to watch carefully, because you're going to be doing this in a minute. Um, I have to be a lot more organised, um, and forward think quite a lot, so so that Anna's Maybe. teaching assistants and her visiting teacher are able to Where get the work and modify all the worksheets and prepare that, which obviously takes quite a long time. Things like maths planning and literacy planning, I have to meet with her visiting teacher once a week, um, which can take up to an hour, maybe more, on different days. Cranium, well done. So this is the cranium. So we go round the front. I think one of the big mistakes I make is I love to think on my feet and change my plans and think, oh, that's going to work better. And it just it doesn't when you've got a visually impaired child because there's so much planning that needs to go into what she has to do. Things like using reference books is always really difficult and you have to plan that for weeks in advance so that we can order them in Braille or um, get other alternatives in. But in terms of actually having Anna in the class as a pupil, it's been a lot easier than I anticipated. Is the humus all the way down to there? It certainly is. Year fours can come back when they're good and ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, mister. When Anna was born, like any child, you, you have, without even thinking about it, you have a life mapped out. And when you find out that your child um, is blind. Somehow that life dies. But you know that life that you thought was taken away isn't taken away. It's just slightly different. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we want for Anna. You know, for her to be who she is, but given every opportunity to be what she wants to be in the future.